Hi, listeners. Welcome to the She Speaks Life podcast, a weekly encouragement where we share our God stories. I'm your host, Jamie Elizabeth, and I am so glad you are spending time with us today to listen. Hi, my friends. Welcome to this week's podcast featuring my new friend, Rhonda Ray. Hi, Rhonda. Thanks for coming on here. Thanks for having me on. Partay. Yeah, I'm excited. (laughs) So Rhonda, yeah, has a great God story to share with us about allowing the Lord to renovate our hearts. And I can't wait to hear what she says. She even wrote a book about it called Fixer Upper, Reclaim Your Happy Space. And I do love this quote. You said, the Lord can take our crummy before and reveal a glorious God-empowered happily ever after. Ooh, that is good. You're right. That's brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) Who wrote that? (laughs) <laughs> Who that? That's so, so and it's true. It's even yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. So Rhonda, let's get to know who you are and your story you are sharing with us today. How this book started and how the seed got planted in your heart. Ah, well, my name is Rhonda Ray and it looks like Rahonda Rahia because there are a lot of unnecessary letters in there, but it's okay because I married a really <laughs> wonderful man. He's a, a pastor you go. and we had, we gave birth to five really cute children who are now grown and starting to have children of their own. I got to tell you guys, this Grammy life is the happy place. It's as much, <laughs> That's it, what it's I heard. Happy. I know. Yeah. Who knew it was as good as it's cracked up to be? I had no idea they weren't kidding. So I'm having a great time. Uh, I also write books. I'm a humor columnist for several magazines and newspapers and, you know, do some TV stuff here and there, write fiction with my daughter. This book, uh, okay, the Fix Her Upper series was actually the brain and heart child. Is there such thing as a heart child? It was the brain child and the heart child. I'm just going (laughs) to stick with that. (laughs) Of my co-author buddy on this project, Beth Duell. And she long told her husband that she was a fix her upper. Uh, He had a fixer upper house and a fix her upper wife. And so when we put our heads and our hearts together and realized that we had the same passion to get these messages out, that we don't have to fix ourselves up. It's not about being a fix yourself upper. If yeah. we can learn to lean in to what God wants to do, then he restores us. And, you know, I do get to speak all over the country at women's events and such. And I have seen that a lot of women, especially, are struggling with their happy. And they're going, what? I just don't know where my joy has gone. I'm, and I feel like I'm just going through the motions. And so... So Beth and I decided to hit the joy really hard in this one and let people know that the same God who restored your soul can restore your joy. And it's not really about getting your life where all the circumstances are perfect. It's not about having everything in order. Lord knows, I don't know anything about having everything in order, but it's it's really about how God can just by his presence come alongside us and and give us a joy that that inexpressible unexplainable joy it's Mm. awesome and he does it really by his presence one of our favorite verses to lean really hard on throughout the book is psalm 1611 and david says You make known to me the path of life. And then he says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. So, you know, I'm looking at that, I'm going, there's no reason why I should be operating at half joy. I don't need half joy. There's no reason I should be, you know, operating with wimpy joy because because in his presence, guess what I can find? Fullness of joy. Yeah. Good news. That's good news that women need to hear, you know? 
Yeah. And is there anything that maybe happened in your life where joy seemed to be important? Is there anything that happened to you personally where this just hit home and this was just a passionate thing for you to speak about? Actually, I do not know anyone who has not on some level or another struggled with uh, a lack of joy. Not a single one of us. With my fifth baby, Mm -hmm. I experienced some postpartum depression that just threw me for a loop because I am basically a pretty silly, happy person. You know, it takes a lot to get under my skin. And so to me, this was, uh, it was just so disconcerting because it didn't feel like me. Yeah. And so during this time, I, I had to understand what joy is and what joy isn't. And it's not always that giddy, happy, let's be silly and party. That is not really what the joy of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Bible also says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So without knowing what it is and without understanding it, how am I going to even be strong? Right. (laughs) So it did become more personal and I just became more passionate about looking into it and, you know, sharing it with other women and to say, look, it's okay to have this little season where you feel down in the dumps. That's not what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And and also I tell women all over the country, if what you're struggling with is a true depression, then don't try to ignore it. Don't slough it off. Don't say, "Ah, I'll just pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'll just don't get over it and move on. Mm -hmm. It's not that either. If you're experiencing a true depression, then you need to seek medical attention. There are things that they can do. You can get a counselor. There are godly people who really love helping people through these processes. And so I always say, get a friend, get a friend, get a professional. And if what you're dealing with is that kind of depression, or if you just don't know, it never hurts. <laughs> it never hurts yeah, to, for to sure. seek that kind of help. But then again, you know, all of us, every one of us has experienced some sort of challenge to our happy. Mm-hmm. And how do we fix that? And really what it comes down to is putting one foot in front of the next, you know, taking that next step, putting one foot in front of the other and understanding that as I experience the presence of the Lord, that's where I'm going to find fullness of joy. And it's just, it becomes Mm -hmm. a, a, a daily prayer. Lord be with me this step. Lord be my joy in this step. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a prayer that he longs to answer Mm -hmm. whatever, again, whatever the circumstances are. Yeah. And I like what you wrote. I believe it was you or maybe Beth, but you guys wrote about, you know, it's not about choosing joy because we're filled with the Holy Spirit as believers and we have the fruit Mm -hmm. of the Spirit and joy is one. So it's in us. The joy is Jesus. We just need to tap into it and and understand and know that it is already in us. Am I correct? That that was what you guys wrote about that was really cool because I think in the Christian culture, we're always saying, choose joy, but really it's already inside us. We just need to understand that we we just need to tap into it. That's exactly right. And and when you're talking about joy being part of the fruit of the Spirit, and you think about the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells me not part-time. He indwells me all the time. Mm -hmm. So there's not any second in life where His joy is not available to me because, because of His presence. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. You're right. That's good. Oh man, that's good stuff. That'll change your life. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I know. Cause I think so often we just forget, we forget that as believers, we have all the fullness and the access of the Holy Spirit and everything that he gives us, all the fruit of the spirit and the spiritual riches that he gives us. We have that in us. And so often we go day to day forgetting we have access because he, he lives inside us and we have full access to it. That's exactly right. Yes. Joy. There's joy every time we think about that. You are right. 
let's talk about more of the book and, and what it's about. Well, you know what? We find so much ammo, so much joy ammo in the Word of God. That's one of the things Beth and I have both been so incredibly passionate about. Man, you get the Word of God into the hands of women. You get them reading it, studying it, making a part of their thinking and as we do that, then it becomes part of our behavior. You do that, and you're going to see women experiencing joy like never before. And again, not the kind of happy, giggly outside stuff, because this is the kind of joy you can experience even when you're going through something awful. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing like really digging into the Word of God and letting Him sort of remake our thinking. And as he does that, he remakes our joy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I just remember when I was spiritually empty and just depleted, I was so motivated by my circumstances. My circumstances dictated my feelings. I remember this was before I sought out personal relationship with the Lord, and this is before I even stepped into a Bible study. And I just remember joining a woman's Bible study out of curiosity, but also some of the stuff I was going through. And the circumstance was so awful that I thought, okay, well, why not give this a shot? It seems like all these women are going to Bible studies. There must be something to it. Mm -hmm. And I go and attend, and my circumstances did not change right away, but my mood, my feelings, the joy, and the peace, it's so supernatural. You can't do that on your own. You can't you know, make that up on your own. It's from the Lord that gives you that. And eventually started to see the circumstance change, but it's just what God does to get us through. And because that circumstance is not eternal, it's temporal. Right. It's going to constantly change, but God does not change. And so therefore the joy and the peace right. that he gives us never changes. And you're right that, you know, he does change the way we feel about these things. Mm -hmm. And it's really not so much feelings as it is an assurance. It's a knowing. It's faith. Yeah. As far as our feelings, you know, our feelings are influenced. They're still under the <laughs> under the curse of sin. We live in a fallen world. And so our feelings are going to lead us astray often. They're influenced by hormones, by what's going on around us. You know, who knows? Feelings are up and down and all around. But what we can rely on is the truth of God. Mm -hmm. And it's the truth of God that will change how we see life, do life, how we get through the tough times. It, it just changes everything. I will say too, you know, Beth and I are, again, as you have now figured out, we're rather silly people, but in a, you know, in a pretty decently good way. <laughs> and I have found through the years as well that laughter, humor is a, an excellent tool. It's an excellent tool for communicating. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yes. Because it kind of connects you with your reader. It connects you with your audience, whatever kind of audience you have. And it breaks down walls and it sort of gives you permission to, as you, you share a laugh, then it kind of gives you permission to talk about the serious stuff, to go into more personal areas. It sort of makes you friends, you know? Mm -hmm. So one of my friends once told me that humor makes people feel at home. And so when we started writing the book, we made sure that we, we kind of frame it up with some good therapeutic chuckles along the way, uh, yeah. you know, about home reno disasters or whatever, you know, there, mm -hmm. there are a, a lot of good laughs that are therapeutic, even if you never really applied the great stuff, but please apply the great stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I was laughing at just the first couple of chapters and one of you are in a dentist chair and you're just still wanting to talk through all the cotton and the mouthpiece that's in there and you're drooling and you're trying to get the words out. <laughs> so that was I, totally Beth. I would never do anything that silly <laughs> muscle. 
<laughs> because I'm a super classy chick. <laughs> What's funny about that is some, my dentist, sometimes they'll ask you questions while they're working on your mouth and you're like, oh, I can't even respond to you. You've got stuff in my mouth. But I think they forget sometimes, yeah, you know? I think also they have this really almost creepy ability to interpret cotton mouth language. <laughs> yeah. Probably, they probably learned it in the schools that they have to go through for these things. But yeah, I think they get it. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. Oh, goodness. oh, so good. Well, the book is coming out. The release date is June 28th. And it is June the 28th. Yes. So excited. Oh, thank you. We're excited too. We have big prayers for this one because again, it's really our heart's desire to see people understand joy a little bit better and experience it mm -hmm. in a big way because you know god did not build us to experience a wimpy joy he he didn't mean for us to just endure life he meant for us to live it to its fullest happy and, yeah and i think it makes him happy when his children are happy mm -hmm. so we are really excited about june 28th when the book officially releases and then it, it will be available at amazon.com boldvisionbooks.com wherever finer books are sold and yeah. so, and we would actually love to hear what everybody thinks of it mm -hmm. what you think even if you know yeah <laughs> whatever your thoughts are we would love to hear that well i love at the end of each chapter there's group discussion and just in personal application, kind of guiding you along as to how do you feel that joy? You know, what do you mean filling yourself with God's presence? You mentioned, you know, reading the word and I'm sure prayers in there, but I love how there's some applications at the end of each chapter just to reflect on. I'm really glad you mentioned that too, because one of our natural tendencies often when we get in a funk is to isolate mm -hmm. and, and and actually God uses his people <laughs> in our lives. We were built for relationship and interaction. There's so much in God's word about doing life together. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're experiencing some challenges to your joy, that's one of the best, best times to connect with a group and study God's word together. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's how we grow, right? So good. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Rhonda, for coming on here and sharing your testimony on joy and getting your book out there. I know it's going to be amazing. So congratulations. Thank you so much for having me on, Jamie. You are a delight. <laughs> thank you. In Rhonda's story, she spoke about having the joy of the Lord and that joy comes from his word and the deep confidence in our relationship with Jesus, not just our emotions. It was so encouraging to hear this, and I hope this gives you inspiration to reflect in your journal about the joy of the Lord in your life. Thank you so much for listening today. I trust that God has encouraged you through this message. For more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com and sign up. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Jamie Elizabeth She Speaks Life. That's J A Y M E Elizabeth. She speaks life. Until next time, my friends, I pray God reveals himself through your own life story.